hello youtube this is dave the mechanic i'm back again with another video and today i'm doing front brake job on a 2010 chevy suburban that's the front brake pads all right this is what your brake pads should look like First, we have to get the car in the air. So I decided to use this part of the frame at the bottom that runs across from one side to the other. It's right in the front. And then I decided to put my jack stand right on the part of the frame that runs from the front to the back of the car. Uh, safety first, of course. Okay. I have the car in the air because I have a uh, impact gun that I'm going to use to get the, uh, the, the lugs off, to get the tire off. But if you're not using the impact, if you're, let's say, using a uh, breaker bar or a four-way, you may want to raise the car a little bit um, and then break the, uh, the nuts while the tire is on the ground. Otherwise, it will spin while you're trying to put tension on it. So you might want to leave the tires on the ground just a little bit unless you have an impact gun like I do and that's probably the quickest way to get it, get it done anyways. So what I'm going to do now, I have a 22 millimeter socket. I'm just going to uh, just loosen this, this hubcap. So far I've only needed to use my hand strength for it, haven't had to use any wrenches or anything like that and then when you get all of them loose the hubcap should come off and now these are exposed you can see it's a 22 millimeter as well If you want to know about this, this is a Craftsman. Uh, it's, you have to plug it in, but this thing, I think I paid about 125 bucks off of Amazon. Been using this for about a year or so now. I haven't met a, a lug that I couldn't get off. brake pads of course are inside here inside the calipers so what we're going to do is we're going to take off this bolt here and this bolt here and that would be able to release that caliper and we'll be able to take our brake pads out replace them press the uh, caliper back in and reverse so these studs are 19 millimeter I'm gonna go ahead and break those and get those out. That's it, just two bolts. Now we should be able to pry this caliper back. All right, and here's the pistons that we have to press back in. All right, these are the brake pads we have to get out, the old pads. You can see the condition. So what I do is I set the pads down so that I can, uh, but I set them down on the sides that they came off. That way I can know what pad which new pad goes on what side so this pad goes on the outside this new pad goes on the inside now i can move my old pads which i'm going to need 
one of them to use to push the uh, caliper back in. But before we push the caliper back in, we're going to take the top off of our brake cylinder. That way, when the cap goes in, the brake fluid rises, it doesn't force its way out of the cap and create a leak. All right, so this is my setup. I got my seat clamp. I got my old brake pad. And I have the, uh, the reservoir, the brake reservoir open. So now I can just continue to press this all the way in until those pistons are flush or at least as far as you can go. And that's it right there. That's what the finished product looks like. This set of pads didn't come with any new hardware, so I'm just gonna use a wire brush and clean the grooves in the old ones, top and bottom, inside and out, get any debris out of there. Now, I can come with my uh, new brake pads and slide those in where they belong. All right. And fortunately for them, they got brake grease. All right. This is how I apply brake grease. I don't apply it to the brake pad. I apply it to the caliper itself. This is where the brake pads are going to make contact with the caliper. You got these three right here and then of course the pistons. So I'm going to put the brake, the brake grease directly on these three platforms right here. And then I'm going to put brake grease and a, a circular motion around on the piston. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to cover it, the whole surface area. I'm gonna I have a gloves on, so I'm gonna come back anyways and smoothen it out. Kind of filling it in. And that's what it's gonna look like. Now I can go ahead and pop it on there. Get my bolts started. Now I have my brand new brake pads installed and lubricated. Now I can go ahead and put the tire back on. Now, this is the way I do it because I know the impact that I have and how much uh, torque that puts on. Um, but for every car that you do, you want to look up the, uh, the manufacturer torque spec for, for the studs or, or the nuts, depending on what you have. That way you know exactly how much torque to put on there. All right, now I got the little hub cap back on. I do the same thing in reverse. I just hand tighten it with the 22 millimeter socket. Make sure 
sure you get it nice, nice and firm. It doesn't have to be overdone. And that's it. That completes the uh, brake job for a 2010 Chevy Suburban. Um, just remember to put your cap back on your reservoir and remove your jack stand before lowering. And that will complete the job. And you can see the fluid is all the way at the tip of top. If I didn't take this cover off, by the time I did the opposite side, it would have definitely blew through something. So that's why it's important to get that off. Thanks again, YouTube, for tuning in. This is Dave the Mechanic. If you liked the video, if it was helpful, go ahead and leave a comment, like, or subscribe. Um, if you have any tips or comments you want to leave, you know, anything that I missed or anything you think I can do better, uh, feel free to leave that as well. Uh, until next time, guys.